Hi, my name is Nicholas Sabad, and I'm a PhD student at the German Cancer Research Center, otherwise known as the DKFZ. Today, I'll be talking about a research which is identifying functional, non-coding somatic single nucleotide variants through the Remind Cancer Bioinformatics Pipeline. Current personalized cancer treatment approaches primarily target mutations in protein coding regions, although the relevance of non-coding regulatory regions has been previously demonstrated. However, the ability to detect these mutations through standard statistical methods is limited due to their low recurrence and missing statistical power. We overcome this limitation by applying the Remind Cancer Pipeline, which is an integrative computational pipeline that combines genomic, transcriptomic, and chromatin accessibility accessibility information to identify functional promoter mutations. Through the use of our pipeline, we analyze a publicly available PCOG dataset, which is a pan-cancer dataset that consists of 2,583 patients and 43 million SNVs. Through the help of the Remind Cancer Pipeline, we highlighted eight candidate promoter mutations and validation experiments, seven out of the eight mutations, exhibited an increase in promoter activity when comparing the, comparing the mutant to its wild type. To explain our methodology, I'd like to bring your attention to the methodology section of my poster. The first step of the pipeline uh, is to detect mutations within the promoter region, which is defined to be 1,000 base pairs upstream and 500 base pairs downstream. Next, for each, of these, for each of these promoter mutations, we then calculate the normalized gene expression of their corresponding genes. Because we want to prioritize potentially functional promoter mutations and validate their impact on downstream gene expression, this step is an integral part of our pipeline. As a fourth step, we then use, or as a third step, I'm sorry, as a third step, we predict the binding affinity of transcription factors, which can lead to the destruction and slash or creation of transcription factor binding sites. Fourthly now, we then use these features along with other features such as chromatin accessibility information and recurrence within a multivariate scoring function to prioritize, to prioritize these mutations for functional validation. Furthermore, in step five, Bioinformaticians and cl clinicians are then able to use a multifunctional visualization tool to manually curate this list to their liking. This tool can be seen within the section visualization tool uh, here. Within this tool, a more thorough and detailed understanding of these prioritized mutations can be gained by looking at a number of different plots. To highlight the four of its most useful features, we here displayed four different graphs pertaining to the promoter mutation within the gene TRMT10C. Figure A displays a normalized gene expression score of a downstream gene in addition to the expression of additional recurrent mutations. Here, the gene expression of the downstream gene could be seen in red, whereas the recurrent mutations gene expression could be seen in black. Moving on, within our pipeline, this particular, this particular mutation within TRMT10C um, leads to the destruction of the transcription factor binding site ZBTB7A, which can be seen here. We can then view the gene expression of this particular transcription factor in this plot here. In figure C, Kong et al. created the tornado plots package that allows for the visualization of deletions and duplications of any gene within the PCOG dataset. Here, we can see a low number of deletions, which is visible on the left side, whereas it has a high number of duplications, which is here on the right side. In figure D, Feuerbach et al. created a quality control tool called Deep Pileup, where we're able to compare the percentage of patients that have a particular mutation to its control for each cohort. We could see that for skin cancer, more patients have this mutation, which is located here in this red, in comparison to its control. This is, however, not the case for any other cancer type which are all located on the x-axis here. With these, plot, with these four plots, among many others, users are able to further prioritize the mutations that they want to functionally validate in next steps. Through our analysis of the PCOG dataset, the Remind Cancer Pipeline, which was just described, eight promoter mutations were identified and thus functionally validated within multiple luciferase assays using the kidney cell line HEC-293. 
Specifically, we introduced these mutations and measured, it, measured it, its expression in comparison to its wild-type promoter. As you can see within the results section of the poster, seven of these eight mutations showed positive results by leading to an increase in promoter activity. Although five led to a substantial increase, two mutations only showed a slight increase, notably this gene here and this gene here. To test the true statistical significance of these preliminary results, however, additional experiments are needed. In conclusion, I presented the Remind Cancer Pipeline, which identifies functional non-coding SNVs, which follows a filter ranking inspection paradigm. Additionally, the integrated vi visualization tool allows for the direct investigation of candidate promoter mutations and can be used for more informed clinical decision making. With an initial specificity of 87.5% and a three-week turnover for the lab validation, the pipeline approaches applicability in precision oncology programs. Considering that all tested candidates were not significantly recurrent and therefore undetectable by frequency-based methods, our pipeline represents a substantial improvement upon existing workflows. With all of that being said, I'd like to thank you for listening to my talk and would welcome any questions. My contact information is located at the bottom of the poster, and I wish you a great rest of your day. Thank you.